Hello guys, hope you all are good. Welcome to another interesting video on our B Aware channel. This is our second video on understanding dashboards. We already have created first video that is dashboard part one. And in today's video, we are going to understand different graphs in content section. So today's video will be more over on average content, composite web and web by type graph understanding and how we are going to use that. We are going to learn it step by step and understand the properties related to it. So let us begin with the first graph that is average content graph. So I'll just pull in the average content graph. I have already created the graphs in behind, but we can also go ahead with understanding what it is. So I have pulled in this graph, which is average content one graph. And basically this is going to give us the average week. So we have already seen all another parameters related to the graphs in our video one. So if you haven't watched that part one, you can go and watch the part one. So in the average content graph is basically used in order to understand how much is our average content available on the buffers. So basically this graph can be used for any of the stations or objects we have, but mostly we use it for buffers, which we use for warehousing. So what we are going to do is we already have this average content graph and what we have done is we have uh, put it in Q1. Now we will add Q2 and we will add Q3. And then if you could look at, we'll just reset uh, and run the model. We'll just keep these graphs uh, side by till the time we come at this point. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to reset and we're going to run it. So what is this graph going to do is it is going to give us the average content. Okay. So I'll just stop this. So if you could look at whatever value is present here in the statistics of Q in the content section of average, you will be able to see that in this average graphs here. So similarly, it is for Q2. Similarly, it is for Q3. So this is the major use of the average content graph. You could also use average content graph in terms of table. So what we'll do is we'll just reset this. And what we will do is we will just add this Q1, Q2, and we will just reset and we will just run it. So if you could look at, it would be in a form of numbers and it would not be in a form of uh, the bar graphs which you are able to see in the top graph. So these are two types of graphs which we can use in Plexin for showcasing the average content of the buffers so if you could look at there are different properties for histogram or bar graph which we have in average content and we have uh, the different properties or lesser windows for this tabular form so the properties these are basically on the form of formatting and all those things and there is no major thing in this uh, so the major formatting place at this area that is options area of the graphs so now what we will do, we will just reset this and we will just delete this and what we are going to do is we are going to bring in the composite whip graph. So if you go in this, we have this type of graph where we have composite whip graph. Here we have three options, we have bar chart, we have line chart and we have table. So in a bar chart, when you look at, we have two options here, one have entrance object and another is exit object. So what we are going to do is we will, for a sake of first, we will select this as Q6. So Q1 is selected as the entrance object and Q6 is selected as the exit object. And what we'll do is we'll just reset and we'll just run. And you could look at the graphs are getting changed for the composite whip. And when you look at this, what we are able to see is this is the count which we are able to see in a bar graph we are able to see this so i'll just make this faster and then i'll just stop this so we'll just go in deeper for this area that is q1 and q6 now how has this 13 uh, quantity been arrived in a graph we need to understand that so we have considered entrance object as q1 so if you look at on the q1 the current quantum capacity uh, is 10 so 10 parts are available on this buffer and if you could look at here it is two parts available on this q6 
buffer and the one part is available on this processor so whenever you are supposed to get a total value in between these buffers then this graph plays a very important role because it is going to give you how many contents are there in between q1 and q6 this is that graph what gives you this value and it is very important in analyzing how many parts are available in which which areas because then we cannot find out the parts which are available in between this graph gives us that great value so for the composite graph we have line we have table we can use it depending on our requirement in line it is nothing but there are line legends and the properties related to line available and uh, we will be getting a data basically at instance of time and we'll just reset and run and check how it looks like so if you look at this this is how it looks so here you get a xy graph which with respect to the timing how the buffers are getting increased and what is the buffer count at the particular instance of time is what you get it in a line graph for a composite whip then we have tabular it is similar to that you will just get the numbers been looking up so this is all about composite whip which we have in the content section so now what we are going to do is we are just going to reset it and we are going to delete this line graph and we are going to bring in our last graph that is whip by type so in this whip by type what we have done is we have already created a label so we have assigned a label to a part when a part is supposed to get exited from this with with a label of batch and here we have assigned with a label of type so what we are going to do now is we are going to assign uh, here as a q5 and then we are going to assign uh, q4 so in this what we are able to do is we are going to find out the count of a particular part based on the type of label it is okay so at the top we are having a label of type here we have a label of batch so what we will do is we will just select this bottom buffer that is q4 as we have a, a label of batch for this flow so you will be getting the count in terms of batches so we have three types of parts one two three batch so respective of those you will get a count so batch one has how many parts then batch two has how many parts and then batch three has how many parts you can get it from here now what we'll do is we'll just unselect this queue and we'll go to q5 now here the label we have assigned is type and not batch and the value for it is number you can select a text also but we are going to play with the numbers so now when we run it if you could look at we are getting a count for it so these are having a label of type and these parts are having a label of batch so this way you could play with the graphs you have different types of graphs so let us summarize what we have learned we can have a average content been calculated using an average content graph where we have two types of graphs one is bar graph and then another which we have is the tabular form then we have composite whip graph which is used to find out the total whip between two entities that is starting and ending and there you can find out using bar line or tabular graphs and then we have whip by type there also we are having a uh, line bar and table along with that there also we have a option of entrance and exit we can find out those uh, how many parts of that particular type of labels are available in between two entities so here we cannot apply label it is a composite it is a total we are getting and in this graph with the whip by type we, we can bifurcate those based on the labels available so this is in detail all about the uh, dashboards which we can use for buffers for analyzing the content based on different parameters also if you have any queries do comment us in comment section we will try to rectify your answers and your queries so the question for today's video is you could also answer it in the comment section as 
what is the major difference between composite whip graph and whip by type graph comment it in the comment section and let us know so if you have liked this video it will really help us to motivate do like video share it with your colleagues if you haven't subscribed to our channel do subscribe to our channel for such interesting videos we will be bringing up ahead for learning and simulating if you haven't watched our video part one of dashboards do go ahead and check out the playlist you will get the video there thanks for staying with us and joining us you can also explore another exciting uh, features or stuffs on our beaverchannel.com website do not forget to visit it and we'll meet in another interesting video till then take care stay simulating